Okay. okay. Well, today uh, we start with uh, uh, little uh, good news. Uh, we uh, redefined a bit uh, the deadline for the next deliverable. So it's good news for you, basically, and it's bad news for us, which we must shrink our evaluation times. But uh, the second deliverable was originally due on the April 22nd. That would be this Friday. And uh, we moved it uh, nearly one week to the 28th of April. Okay, so that we, we will discuss the feedback in the lab of uh, uh, the 2nd of May, like we did in the first time by going through the different groups, and you have time until the 28th to update that. So please be on time, this time, because last, uh, on the first deliverable there were many projects that were just updated in the morning <laughs> before the lab. But right now we have the 1st of May. We, we have a, a couple of days of, uh, of vacations. And so uh, it's important for us to be able to review them hmm, on the 29th, which is still the, and the Friday of the week before. Okay? So we give you more days, uh, but try to be on time. So today we are talking about the contents of this deliverable, of this second stage. Um, just remember, the, our process uh, requires first to focus on the requirements of the project and only later on the architecture and the components of the project itself. Of course, you, many of you already started thinking about the components because sooner or later you must uh, start putting th something together. And it's good to start, let's say, exploring your options regarding the available components. Uh, but uh, it's too early uh, to commit uh, to uh, any specific choice. Okay? Uh, why? Because maybe it turns out that when we have a look at the whole set of system functionalities, uh, it turns out that the, the, the kind of device that we need or the kind of uh, um, architecture that we need uh, to create is different from what we had in mind. Hmm? Um, it's too easy to focus on the main problems, on the main issues that you have. OK, this is a really hard issue. I don't know how to tackle that. And uh, uh, instinct pushes you to uh, consider what is around the main problem, the main issues. OK? Uh, and in some way, you risk of losing the focus on the whole project. Then you, you, you resolve that problem, and you find out that you really didn't think very well about the rest. Okay? So that's why we are trying to break you down and say, OK, let's spend a couple of weeks uh, in writing down the list of functionalities. Once you have them with their priorities, it will be easier uh, to understand exactly what, is, what every component of your architecture needs to do. And if, doesn't, if that, that component doesn't do it well or in the correct way, uh, then we know what is the impact on the set of functions and whether we can accept this impact. Hmm? So uh, we, as, as we discussed in the beginning, when we discussed the, um, the general design flow, uh, we acknowledge that uh, when I write a list of functional requirements especially, many of them uh, will not be satisfied. We would identify priorities to the different uh, um, requirements so that if, if anything goes wrong with times, with software, with bugs, uh, we know what to drop we know, and we know what we uh, really want to save or need to save. Hmm? So with this in mind, <clears throat> let's have a look uh, at, at the contents of the liberal number two, the second stage of our design. Right now we have a vision, we have an idea of a project. The next step is uh, to define the perimeter of this project. So where does it end? Right now we, you gave a very promising vision. You told people, well, our project will do a lot of wonderful things. Okay, this is something that borders on marketing, saying that you are doing 
uh, you're saving their lives and making their, their day better and so on. Huh? Uh, but once we stop talking to the user in marketing language, we need to, to acknowledge to ourselves, uh, okay, what is the real uh, set of functions that our system is doing? So I have a, a paragraph here that I call the purpose and scope. So this information this is part of this uh, second assignment, second deliverable, is uh, to define what is the goal of the system and what are the problems that it tries to solve. You may say, well, this is the same that we did in the vision document. Yes, somewhat. Uh, the difference is that the, the same information is similar to what we had in the what you had in the vision, but here it should be more more concise, more formal, more precise. So the the vision was intended for end users that want to get emotional about your project, and this purpose and scope section is intended for managers or engineers that want really to understand what it's about. Can I can it solve my, in my needs? And so on. So uh, the the audience, also the language uh, that you should do, you should use, uh, should uh, reflect this different, more technical audience. And uh, the best way of describing hmm, what a system is does is to be very clear about uh, what is in and what is out in your system. So what does it do actually? And uh, don't be gene too generic. Huh? Try to be Specific, it's no shame here uh, writing down that this system is not, doesn't do the coffee for you. Hmm? Mm, you define a boundary in which uh, your system is going to work and all the function of the system will be within that boundary. Uh, try to be precise and try to understand whether your boundary is well defined or is totally scattered because you are adding a feature here, another there, and so it will be very difficult for you to confine and to describe a criteria, a set of criteria for saying, okay, is this function expected from the system or is this function outside of the scope of the system? Okay, so you should be able to play a game with, with your friends by pulling out a random feature and say, does it fit in your project? And if the answer is clear, it means that you have a well-defined scope for your project. If the, effort is, the answer is, well, maybe it might be, it depends, uh, uh, and then you have a scoping problem. Hmm? Your project is not very focused, uh, it's, too, it's too fuzzy. Okay? And if at the beginning, before starting implementation, you don't have a clear idea or where to end or where to stop, then when you're starting to write the code, you will have no ways to stop, uh, actually, to say, okay, that's, that's, that's finished. This is what I wanted to achieve. Hmm? Then we'll try to, to make an example um, about this. Hmm? Uh, it's difficult to throw something out hmm? because it's your kid, it's your creature, the project, so you want, uh, you want it to be able to do anything, okay? But asking too much is getting too few, uh, too little. So if you ask too much for your project, uh, and in the end uh, you're getting maybe a set of little functionality or, so, or some problems that you can solve in the available time, right? So don't be afraid for this. And uh, I have some notes in the margin also, but saying, okay, this is nothing uh, interesting. And then we have a section, section two. As you know, you don't need to have actually these titles or these sections in your website. You can organize the, the information as you want, okay? This is just a checklist of, it's more of a checklist than a template. Hmm? Just to remember that you should have this information. Um, well, let's start from this, the actors. We should identify who are the persons that are going to use the system. Okay, not by name. Hmm? I don't want to list the users, but the categories of users. 
uh, what I call the actors. There are people that are going to interact with the system. Different people may have different uh, ways of interacting with your system. Hmm? For example, if, you are, if I'm thinking about a website, I may have a, a generic user, an anonymous user, that just browses the public part of the website. And another registered user that can log in and see also the internal parts of the system. And among registered users, I may have uh, special administrators, for example, that have a special role. They can do different things. So we have this notion of, of actors, uh, meaning the roles that the users can play when interacting with the system. They can play different roles depending on, on my credential, for example. No, I am allowed to do this or not, depending on, uh, um, on what I want to do in this, in this moment. Hmm? Do I just want to browse, do I want just to check in, and so on. So for example, you have a lot of uh, devices that are in your project that uh, measure some kind of activity, physical activity or something about the person. But that person is not the only one that in some way exploits the system. So there will be one person, which is the person, let's say, the main target person or the main user of the system. But there, are, there may also be other users, maybe their friends or family that want to see some data or share it. Hmm? And uh, they have a different view of the system. They can access a different set of functionalities. Okay? So if you have only one type of user, then you will have only one actor. Usually, we have at least two. One is the administrator, the one actor, one person that is able to do all the configuration and setting on the system. And the other is the end user. They might be the same person. Hmm? I, I don't mean that different actors. No, uh, I, if I'm playing a role today, tomorrow the same person, me, can play a different role. Hmm? We are actors, after all. So I'm not telling that there, are, there should be different physical persons. I'm saying that the attitude, the hat that I have in uh, today, can change. And depending on the hat that I'm putting today, I can have access to different uh, uh, functionalities. Um, if uh, there is one user that is giving a service to another user through a system, uh, these are very different, uh, let's say, roles in the system. Hmm? And uh, identifying the actors helps you to focus on which persons want to use the system, and for each of these persons, what are the kind of interactions that they can have with the system. Hmm? And this be, is, will be a first step to define the functionalities. More in general, so this actors item tries to define the types of users. Uh, more in general, we should be careful of defining the terms, the words, the verbs, the nouns, hmm, that we use uh, in our um, description, in the rest of, uh, of, the, specific, of the requirements uh, specification. Um, in many cases, uh, we want to be explicit about uh, what is meant uh, or what we want to achieve in this project. For example, uh, take a project that relies on measuring body activity, hmm? or in general, activity. If I'm using the word activity, it means different things for your different projects. In some cases, uh, activity will be the steps of a person. In some other cases, activity will be uh, I don't know, the, the blood pressure, in another case will be a baby crying, uh, so in another case it will be a person approaching a bus stop and trying to think about your project, right? So one, I'm trying to measure some activity of a person. If you are just using the, 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 the noun activity, 
all your description becomes ambiguous. Because if your friends reach your project, they won't understand it. They, because they have their own meaning of the word activity in mind. And if they're trying to, to read your project with a different inter interpretation of your words, okay, uh, it all gets messed up. Messed up huh? So what, what you want to do really is to redefine the meaning of the words. Say, so, okay, in, in this project, when I'm saying activity, I'm saying uh, uh, the steps uh, uh, by, the, by this person today. Hmm? The steps uh, that this person made uh, today since this morning. Or the speed at which uh, this person is walking now. Hmm? So try to define it. And if you do that in a sort of a glossary, uh, uh, you will be sure that when, when somebody reads your project, actually understands what you want to understand. And you don't need to explain it over and over and over again. What I read in several times in a project is that something, some concept is not well defined at the beginning. So the person writing the text is trying to explain it every time it, it, it comes out. Every time he needs to talk about that, he'll try to explain that. And it will be explained in different ways, with different words. So at the end of the day, it will be very boring and complex to read. And at the end of the document, we won't have still a definition, which is really a definition. We'll be trying a set of partial explanation, by the way, in parentheses, in footnotes, and so on. So just take the stance and okay, say, OK, these are my terms. This is my project. And these are the terms that they want to use. And try then to use them consistently. Okay. If you call one person a user, always call them user and not people. Hmm? Don't try to use the, once you define the term, use it consistently. If you say activity, don't say speed or walking speed later. Huh? Try to define as the, the, the most important concepts in your project at the beginning, and then you can use them many times. Hmm? Um, it's, it's better, or, or, let's say, we'll see it in, on the 2nd of May, you know, whether um, when you write it, OK, in describing this in general terms, it's very difficult to understand uh, in some way what, what I'm meaning. You know? But what, when you try to write it, you'll come out uh, uh, with this problem. Uh, you, the text that, if you don't define a term, when you're trying to describe the project, uh, you will, uh, say, write a lot of excuses. I say, I'm writing this word, but by the way, I'm meaning this. And you're doing that in the wrong place. OK, so uh, get rid of ambiguities at the very beginning. Define the terms, define the users. Right? Then we can go to the more technical part, which are all the system requirements. And as we know, the system requirements are split in two different, uh, very wide groups, the functional requirements and non-functional requirements. Right? Functional requirements are what uh, the system should do. What are the different uh, actions or interactions that the different users of the system may perceive, may experience, when they interact with your system. So this is why it's useful to have the list of different users defined beforehand. Because say, OK, because then at that, at that point, you can imagine being that user and trying to imagine all the possible things that the user can want from your system right now. And uh, uh, it's uh, useful to group this set of functions, because there may be ma many of them. Uh, it can be a long list. You can try to group them by functional area. So on, for example, you have one area about uh, everything related to user login, registration, forgetting the password, and so on. You may have another area related to whatever is public about the system. 
another area about uh, the I don't know the notifications that the user gets uh, on their mobile devices, and so will be we relate all to the programming mainly on the mobile devices and so on. Just for for your ease of thinking, okay. And so we define a set of functional areas, and the suggestion is a number in the functional areas with a, with a number, of course, or with, or with a small string. For example, login is something like log. Uh, can be used, uh, or sorry, or the, the web pages are web, uh, notification or notif, uh, and preferences are press. Something short that reminds you of the meaning of that area. So you are breaking down the list, of, the full list of functionality of your system into different areas, into different domains. Okay, some will be more important than, than others. But at the mo for right now, until this moment, we should think wide. All the functionalities that the system should offer to the users, as long as they are in scope. They should be in scope. This is why we, we, we really need to be precise about the scope of the system. Otherwise, when you're starting to write the functional requirements, Every nice idea will come to your mind, and you will be tempted to add it as a, as a requirement. Uh, you should have a criteria for saying, no, this is not related. This is another, is another project. It's very nice, but it's not for today's project. Hmm? So the full list will be complete within your scope. And then you have the real list of functional requirements, which is a long list. And I uh, suggest it to, to be structured like this. FR stands for functional requirement, area dot number. So the X is the functional area. You can reuse the same numbers or the same strings that you defined here for the area, so that it, you can remind easily, OK, what, uh, in which area is, is the requirement related to. And then the y is just a uh, number, uh, a consecutive number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Mm -hmm. If you want, you can invent your own more complex numbering systems, but this is the bare minimum. And then you give a title to the requirement. User login. Two, three, four, four, four five words, no more, that gives you an idea mm, uh, of what this requirement is about. And of course, the title is not enough. Hmm? Uh, I, could, I, could, I could have a functional requirement like uh, the no password recovery. Good. I understand what it's about. But then I need to specify how. How does the user recover a password? So for example, uh, when the user activates the password recovery, it needs to provide uh, an email address, and then an email with a secret link will be sent to him, or any other way. And how this function will be executed is listed in this description field. So the description tells me what are the, the actions that you can do with the system to accomplish that task, that function. Imagine one paragraph of text, three, four, five, five lines, hmm? four or five lines of text describing what happens. You don't need to, to implement it right there, but just to explain what is happening. Um, the best kind of description for a, a functional requirement is to imagine you are trying to test whether it's, work, it's working or not. So password recovery. OK. I came to a new website, and uh, I want to check whether the password recovery is working. So what are the steps? What am I doing? So if you try to think about uh, trying to describe the, how the function works by describing or by thinking about how you could test it, what it works, then it will be easy. Because then you, you will say that the user will uh, ask for the password recovery, then enter their email address, and lately and, uh, receive an email with a code, with a link that they need to click onto. 
So the, act, the set of actions for testing a functionality are also a good description of how that functionality is expected to work. Hmm? You don't need to be very long here, but just given the main issue. Of course, uh, you should, me, you should uh, say provide more details if the function is more complex. For trivial things, like login or something like that, uh, don't waste your time and don't waste your space in going too many, in too many details. And then the other important field here is the priority. Being able to accept or drop a requirement is as important as defining it. So um, a priority means uh, if I imagine, let's see this comment, if I imagine my system going out in stages, version 1 and then version, two, uh, I don't know, summer 2016 and then uh, autumn, winter 2016, the version 2, and then in 2017 you incorporate in a company and uh, you sell the product, the version 3, and so on. Imagine different stages. So you try to imagine of labeling at which stage a given functionality will be implemented. First, second, third, fourth version, and so on. You can't put everything on version one. Version one should have the minimum capabilities to be able to make a demo, to demonstrate the project. The minimum ones. Okay, so your target, you know, if you are talking with uh, people working with startups, uh, they will call uh, it as an MVP, minimum viable product. So the minimum set of functionality that makes a product. Uh, we just aim at a minimum viable prototype, not even a product. It doesn't even need to be finished or to have a logo or to have a name, okay? And this will be our priority one. If you are missing even one uh, requirement of priority one, then you will not be able to run the demo. Everything should be needed and essential for having the system working. Okay? So this should be the criteria for priority one, the, more, the most priority. Then you can think, you can be a, 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 bit more, a bit more optimistic, and you can think about priority two. Priority two will be the functionalities of your system that you really hope you will get into the system by June or September. Hmm? So if everything goes right, I can also implement most of the functionalities in priority two. If they don't get priority one right, or the full priority one right, then the project is not valid. If I get all the priority one, the project is acceptable at the minimum, the bare minimum, but the bare minimum but then at that point, I can start adding new stuff at priority two, and so on. Think also about the future. Hmm? Um, how do I define a priority? Uh, the priority is a combination of necessity and relevance, I would say. Uh, something should have a high priority if it's necessary for the system to work. For example, login. I, I, I can't even imagine a system where the user is not identified. Or maybe it is. I think about the best station with the blind. So every, everyone that works there interacts with the system without even knowing them. So it's a public system. It works anonymously. It doesn't need to remember users from users. So, but uh, there are some things that, there are some functions that are really necessary. Maybe the logging is one of the most boring functionality in every application. Because you need to have the user and the registration, the password and the recovery and so on. Hmm? Try to think about, but, but without that, uh, the system cannot uh, recognize, if you have two users, cannot tell them apart. Hmm? 
So there will be something that is a high priority because it's a, it's a boring, stupid part, but it's necessary. The other part is relevance. So you have a high priority for uh, features that are specific to your project, that are really the, the, are really the core of your project. Uh, they're, they're the features that make your project itself, huh? that make it stand out. And uh, of course, mm, these are the most important ones. So try to start for, for, from the most relevant ones, and then add the minimum necessary ones. Uh, if you are starting for the necessity, then you have a, a long list uh, of uh, a, lo a longer list than, 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 than really needed. For example, the password recovery or registration of a new user is not a necessity in most cases. Okay, if it's a, for a prototype, you can register three users by hand. You don't need to have a fancy user interface for forgetting passwords or so on. It's not necessary. It's not relevant either. And it's not that you have a good password recovery that makes your project better or satisfy better the scope that you had at the beginning. Huh? Unless the scope was making user authentication better, all the paths related to user authentication are not really relevant. We put them in because they are necessary. Okay. So the most important part is this one. Identify the most relevant features and put them into priority one. And add the minimum necessary ones to make it working. And then you can think about session version two and so on. It's not easy because you, have, you need to have compromises. You want to put more, but it's, it's better to have a few items in priority one and then a few in priority two and in your development, uh, targeting priority two. But at least if you need to drop something or to change something, you know what, what to change. All the compromises have been thought and decided at the beginning and not while you are deep in the development. If you want, you can just list one priority number there. But if you prefer, you can also list uh, the necessity and the relevance numbers separately. Hmm? So if you want to help yourself, for example, making the choice or listing them in your draft or even in the website, you could also try to split this uh, priority in the, in the two components. Hmm? OK. And this makes the list uh, by different topics of the functional requirements. The next and last uh, section is the non-functional requirements one. Uh, the areas for functional requirements, for, sorry, for non-functional requirements are already predefined usually and uh, are one of these. This is the, the picture that we have also on the slides and say what are the main uh, areas in which we need to specify how the system is working. So remember, non-functional requirements are not things that the system does. No, it's not a, another new function. But it's a constraint or a better specification on, on how the system is doing or is implementing all the functional requirements. So for example, some important ones are portability. So uh, saying what are the devices in which the system is supposed to run. So I have a web server that is going to run on this machine, on the Raspberry, or on a, on a PC, or whatever. I have the web interface that is uh, expected to work uh, on a laptop, or on a mobile, or both, on a tablet, on a mobile with which resolution? If I were building a project for the, for the market, a product actually for the market, I would try to understand, uh, okay, the majority of my users 
what kind of devices they have. Trying to maximize uh, the potential users that can use my interface because they have th these devices, so small, so large, so fast, and so on. Uh, we don't need to do this really here because maybe the system is only working on three devices, mine and yours, for example. But we need to declare that. Uh, say, okay, the, the system is going to be used on this brand of telephone, just that. Hmm? Of course, if you can, at zero additional cost, try to be portable, try to be standard. Hmm? But having, let's say, a very flexible, customizable user interface is not one of the main uh, goals hmm, of the project. It's not necessary, it's not really relevant, so don't try to ask too much for that. Hmm? Um, interoperability means, okay, my system will need to work or to connect to use other services. Okay, I need to connect to Google Calendar or to Yahoo Maps or to uh, the weather information or whatever. Okay, so we need to describe them so that we know which, which are the, say, the external dependencies of our system. Every time we need this kind of information, we go out, we reach out for that service. And we, we, we list it. And the other, if you want, is efficiency. So putting or declaring upper bounds on the time needed by the system. So saying, okay, the system should reply, for example, in a web interaction in less than one second. Or if you are checking the user activity, you should check it at least every 30 seconds, for example. Huh? To, to put the minimum, let's say, speed or the minimum, let's say, uh, computing uh, frequency that the system is, is, will guarantee to the user. Hmm? Uh, and all these numbers, all this, say, specification that you put in here should be clear in your mind when you start implementing the system. Uh, Non-functional requirements don't have priorities. They all must be matched. So they are all always at priority one. Why is that? Well, because uh, it's easy to add the implementation of a new functional requirements. Okay, I need, I need to add a couple of more web pages for letting the user I don't know, change his, his picture, his profile picture. Can be added any time, even later. It doesn't change everything, how the system works. But you usually cannot add a new functional requirement, uh, so a new non-functional requirement on top of, of an existing system. You can have a system say, OK, now I want it to be compatible with iOS also. Yeah, you need to redesign or recheck all of your web pages. It's not just something additional. It's something that will change everything. So adding or changing a non-functional requirements is something that is a disaster in terms of effort. That's why we should have them clear at the beginning, and they should be very minimal hmm? for our purpose, of course. OK, um, the last section or the last, uh, say, requirement for this stage is the open issues paragraph, which is actually a continuation or an update over the open issues that you already had uh, in deliverable one. Hmm? So you, you had a list of open issues, and you can update them because some of the issues were that you already that you had one month ago maybe will be solved, so you can cross them or mark them as solved. Uh, some will be still there. Some will be new, because as you, as you study better, new problems come out. So try to keep the list of the major issues that you are facing. Um, we saw in the first uh, deliverable one that some of you have uh, 
what these open issues in, in a prose, in a paragraph of text. Try to make it a list so that it's easier to see what changes and you can you can read and check and add the information to that instead of uh, just, by, just by being very schematic, okay? Uh, one uh, one thing that uh, I noticed in the in your projects is that uh, some of you say mm, understood the, the the open issues as it were a, a to-do list or things to do. Hmm? Not all, not everything to do is an issue. There may be something that okay it needs to be done. But it's not a problem. We just need to find the time you know, for doing that, or to learn that framework, or to or that function, or that API to understand how it's done. But it, they they don't worry me. They are not real issues. They are just things to do that they need their time. They need their study, of course. They need their testing. But it's just normal development. The issues, you know, try to reserve the open issue section for things that you really, right now, don't know how to solve. It's not just a matter of putting some time in that. They don't just require time. They require, they require finding a solution that you don't know yet. Because maybe there's some component that you don't understand how it works. Because uh, there's some, I don't, you, you don't know where to find some information. You don't know whether there is any web service that can provide you some, I don't know, information about uh, uh, the opening hours of the gym. Is it there or not? And if it's not there, I need to change the, uh, the project. So the open issues are issues, problems, that depending on how you solve them, will change the shape of your project. If that is not possible, then you need to change something else to make it work. So until you solve these issues, you cannot really commit to your design. Then when these issues are solved, when hopefully all the open issues will be solved, it means that you only need a lot of time to do to implement it. But everything should be clear. Okay? So don't try to list everything that needs to be done. We know that there's, there's a lot to be done. Try just to highlight those items whose solution or outcome is not clear to you yet. That's it. So of course, the, the, the most, of, most of the effort will be on the functional requirements in this stage. So uh, can we try to do an example together? Just to see, let's say, more, in more concrete terms how it turns out. So I'm trying to write uh, the deliverable tool for my project, the wake kill project, okay? Mm. Oh, sorry. So we have a first section that reads uh, project uh, scope and uh, or purpose. Remember what's in and what's out of your system. So we don't need to be fancy now about uh, engaging our users. We need to be, say, technical, more technical. And saying, you know, remember the system which is able to use the, all the all the sensors and all the devices available in your house to enhance your wake-up experience. Okay, this sentence in the technical world doesn't mean anything. All the sensors, all of them, nah, can believe that. To make your experience better, what does it mean? Okay, so let's talk, let's talk as engineers again. And we say that uh, the system is composed or, uh, let's say, exploits a set of sensors 
in your smartphone or in your house and a set of, let's say, actuators to deliver a wake up to the user. wake-up service. Hmm? And uh, um, what are these sensors? We don't need now to, to specify actually the name of the device. Huh? But this sensor can be, uh, say, the, the wake-up time is defined by, uh, let's say, uh, checking the user calendar, for example, if we want. So depending on the, if you have something at 9 o'clock, then you need to wake up one hour before. The set times for the phone alarm. So if I put an, an alarm at 6, it should ring at 6, even if I don't have anything in my calendar. It, so these are sort of sensors. I'm reading some information. These are easy sensors because it's already information that we have in our smartphone or in the cloud, the calendar. So is there any ambient sensor that I should use? Hmm? I don't know, maybe the external weather. Weather. If it's raining, or if it's snowing, it will take me more time to get to work. So I need to wake up earlier. And so on. And uh, full stop. So here I'm defining what is the set of sensors that they want to use, the set of information that they want to use. What is in, what is out. It doesn't take into account, for example, the, the noise level in the room. It's a choice. I need to stop there. I want to stop there. Because I don't find it relevant right now. OK? There's nothing bad with the defining the system. It might be relevant or not. Is it better? I don't know. I, I just uh, uh, thinking loud. Uh, is it better to? to understand the temperature and the noise level in the room or the outside weather. We should decide, we should think. And try to understand, and in, in doing this selection of macro features, we are act actually giving a shape to our system. So even if I gave uh, the same project to different groups, uh, while selecting what is in and what is out, probably you would, be, you, you would make different choices. Because everyone can see a more, that some part is more important than another. Uh, the, we already know that the wake up uh, up method is a combination of the phone ringing, the lights going on, the curtains being opened, and for example, the music. Playing. For example, uh, so I didn't list any vibrating device under my pillow. I could have listed that. Hmm? And then we have a set of other specifications. So if the user is not at home, 
then only the phone used. If the user is not alone, then music and curtains must not be used, for example, because I don't want to wake up somebody else. So, I, so uh, implicitly, I also, I'm also saying that I need to know whether the user is at home or not. And so it's, if it's a wake-up system for a day when I'm at home, or the same wake-up system can work when I'm abroad in a hotel or something like that. So it's less uh, engaging, this kind of description, but actually it's more precise. Huh? Uh, and finally, the user can set, uh, set the preferences on the wake up. And the system may learn from the user habits, for example. If I, I see that the user is always late, then we'll try pulling the, the, the alarm 10 minutes earlier, for example. Uh, you know, this sentence can be here or not. A decided system doesn't have any learning capabilities. Or it should have it. It's up to me. I decide whether the curtains, or it is nice to say, but then how do I move them really? They need a motor and then some sensor to check whether they're open or closed, when, whether they need to start, when do I need to start and stop the motor? So this kind of functionality will increase significantly the mechanical complexity of my system. Is this a strong feature for me or not? Do I do we have the skills for that or not? Because if it's not a really a, a core feature, a key feature, and it's difficult for me to do, I can drop it. As long as if I read the project again without this feature, is it still valid? Is it still good? Yes. So it's your baby. Hmm? Try to put whatever you are stronger stronger at. Okay. I saw in your project there are projects in which there are, for example, mechanical engineers that don't have any mechanical parts at all. And some projects in which there are only electronics and, and computer engineers where they're struggling how to move mechanical parts. Okay, I find it funny, funny huh? because you created something and you created your own problems. Hmm? Okay, you will solve them. Uh, but you're still in time to try you know, to shape, to mold it in a way that is more, let's say, uh, similar to your skills. Hmm? Okay, something like this. Uh, something I didn't say here, okay, to the user, singular, one user. So the system is for one user, not for the family. Hmm? So the, the, the purpose and the scope is the wake up for one single user. This is how we describe it. It could be a different project whether the house is intelligent for, for the whole family, for all the people in the house. It's a different project. Right now, it's just for one user, and it tries not to bother too much the other users in the house. But the real target is one. Hmm? OK, this is an example of a, of a text like this, two or three paragraphs. Uh, then I have the glossary.
and the actors. The actors are easier to do. I start there. So we have the main user. We call it user or target user. The main user of the system that will be woken up by the system. Woken up. And then we may have other types of users, for example, family. That are other people living with the main user, with the target user, sorry. Now I defined it to be user or target user. I already made a mistake because I was calling it main user. No, it's target. Not main user. Once I define a term, I, I need to use it consistently. We shall be target user, but are not uh, to be woken up. Hmm? For example. But, I saw him a bit nasty here, but they, they might insert information into the system to change the target user's schedule. One example. I don't know, my daughter tomorrow needs to go to, you know, some, something out with the school. So she needs to leave uh, earlier than usual. So you, she can tell the system, okay, wake up my dad earlier. This is one example. Different users can do different things. And... Uh, other definitions, uh, in this case, what, what, what would be defined here? Is the location, whether it may be at home or away. So instead of saying, OK, the user may be in a restaurant, maybe in a trip or whatever, we just define location away. If the location is away, then the system will behave in a way. If the location is at home, then the system will be. A we, are, we are trying to. We are defining shortcuts for us later. Okay, we are defining, for example. Stimuli. Huh? So all the set of audio and light, etc., uh, say signals that are supposed to wake up the person, the target user. So I don't need to repeat every time I ring the phone and the switch the lights on and so on. Later, when I need it, I would just say the system will apply the stimuli, which is the plural for stimulus. And so on. We try to identify. Maybe we don't, we don't find all of the, of the terms at the beginning. When we start writing the, the, the functional requirements, we will discover that we are using the same concept over and over, and so we go back and add a term for that. OK, so let, let's leave it open for the moment. The next step are functional requirements.
So functional requirements live in different functional areas, right? So I could have uh, the suggestion was uh, shown in the form of a table. Maybe have a functional area. So area code, functional area. No, not like this. Like that. So, for example, I have an area where the user can set up the system. So when I open the, the system, I need to configure it, associate it to my lights and to my uh, phone and to my curtains or define my location and so on. So I, call, I can call it uh, installation setup first configuration. So I can call it setup. Every function in here in this area, we have a priority lower than one. OK? It's not worth spending too much time in automating the first, uh, the unboxing of the system, uh, the opening and uh, the first run of the system. We will do it by hand uh, before the demo, by, by putting data into the database. Hmm? We don't need an interface for that. But it's there. It's one area. One functionality that is only used once. Then there is the configuration. So there's uh, settings and preferences. May be changed anytime by the target user. Uh, some should be more important than others. You may have a lot of the configuration settings. For example, the color of the light when you want to wake up. Okay, it's a setting that you can imagine. Maybe I, w I won't put that into priority one. Maybe into priority one I would put a setting: Do you want music or not? So something more important. But some of this is part of how the system works. We call that relevant before. Some of these settings are relevant because I, I want to show uh, that the system will be, is able to adapt to different user preferences. And, and, and if I want to show it in a demo, I, can, I should be able to change some preference and see that the system will adapt, will change their behavior. So some of that is relevant to us. Not all of it, because some will be really details. Then we have the um, the setup for the next morning uh, wake up time. So this is something that you do every evening. Then you re rely on the system maybe to adapt to improve that time. Or maybe the system will interact with the calendar. And, but it's something that you can do or you want to do many times, over and over. This is essential. It's something that the user should do easily. Of course, you can define a, a weekly schedule or something like that. And at that time, the system will apply your, all the preferences. Then you have the actual wake up. So actions of the system to wake the uh, target user 
आप सो इट्स ऑल इनिशियल सेटअप आई डू द कॉन्फ़िगरेशन व्हाट आई प्रेफर आई सेट द टाइम फॉर टुमारो मॉर्निंग एंड आई गो टू बेड एंड देन द सिस्टम विल रिंग मी अप is do you see any uh, large functional area hmm? probably not hmm? uh, so most of what in the wake up area will be a high priority one or two hmm? which is actually the core of our project so this is just you know, having the areas, the bigger parts. And then we can go to the actual list of functional requirements. So I could imagine setting also a table for, per, for every requirement. I can have a functional requirements, uh, for, for example, Um, set time one. The title is set the wake up time for tomorrow. Description and priority. Then, for example, set time two, set the wake up time for every day in the week. So this will be a baseline every Monday, every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Saturday. And then I can override it day by day on a day by day basis. So, but tomorrow will be something different. And uh, for example, you saw in the wake up uh, area, for example. Another would be requirement three, uh, ignore or suppress. Wake up for tomorrow. And so on. Hmm? Now for it, each are the different functions that are in this area. So how the user sets up the wake up times according to their normal schedule. We know that the system will adapt it. Let's write a description of one of these just to understand. So we already understand, we know the area and we have a title. We more or less understand what it means. In the description, you, we can be more explicit about who is doing what. So the target user on his mobile phone uh, selects a function to suppress any wake up call in the next day from 0 to 23.59. So what does it mean tomorrow? If it's already 1 o'clock, what do I mean by tomorrow? Uh, really, I, wish I should say today. Huh? So, to suppress any work in the wet, eh? in the next day, if it's uh, before 23.59, or in the current day, from if, the, if, it's, uh, if it is uh, from 0 to 6. Hmm? 
we may decide. Or we may have a different criteria. So, you know, we are trying to ask ourselves what should happen in that specific case. The, the, the testing method. How can I prove that your system is wrong, that you have a bug? I try to suppress the, you know, the wake up call in a strange time. By doing that exactly at midnight or exactly at seven, at six o'clock. So if I think about boundary condition for, for testing the system, I, it's easier for me to understand, uh, to write a, a complete specification. Hmm? The meaning of tomorrow. And so on. Uh, priorities. Well, probably the first two well, could have priority one, and this could have a priority two, probably. Hmm? Being able to suppress is less important than being able to show that it actually wakes you up, and you can also, and you, you are not forced to do it every, every evening. You can do it week by week, or you can set up a weekly schedule. Hmm? So this is nice, but it's not so important. Without the first two, you cannot have a convincing demonstration. With the set time three, you can be better, but you can also uh, live without that. I'm sharing the file, don't worry. Um, and so on, OK? So you can imagine in every of these areas, we have different uh, functions. And every of the, each of these functions will be one button or, or one menu in the user interface, one button in the mobile interface, one physical button in the, on the Raspberry, on the, on the physical device. There should be ways of activating each of these functions, OK? We need a description, always remember to, to name the user, the actors that are involved in that use case. Oh, for example, in the, way, in the set time, there, there may be also the family. You, may, you remember measuring that? So you could have a set time four, family, asks to override tomorrow's time. So in this case, the description is any family member. OK, family, maybe a friend, it may be, OK, uh, they don't need to be really family. We just define this word, family, as other people living with the target user. Not living, living, sorry. Living. With the target user. Why they are living together, I don't care. Okay? They are in the same house. The, I call them family with a wrong way. It's not the real semantics of the word family. It's the meaning of this word in this document, which overrides the dictionary meaning of the same word. Right? So every family member may, uh, oh, no, any, A. I'm describing one case, one function. A family member inserts a wake up time to override or for the next day that will be taking into account for the target user by taking the minimum between the normal time and the override request, and so on. So if you try to start decomposing these blocks, your project in, in this set of blocks, and try to play the game where every block can be there or missing. They are independent from each other. Huh? 
You did a good job if any of them is independent from the other ones. OK? Good. It's 7 o'clock, so we need to close it here. I will add, add a couple more examples and then publish the document for you. Hmm? If you have any questions or anything before the deadline, just uh, don't forget to ask. Hmm?